Hi, everybody. Hi. All right. So today we're going to be talking about marketing data intelligence and how our agency used it to skyrocket our B2B conversions. But first, I have a question for you all. Raise your hand if you think the Oxford comma is unnecessary. It's improper. You hate it. You can't stand it. You wish it would just go away forever. Yeah, yeah, okay, like half, okay. Raise your hand if you think it's great. Okay, all right, okay, thank you. Aha! I have now just segmented my audience. You have all now given me valuable information about yourself for free. Thanks for that. You see how easy that was? It was so easy for you to be an active participant to answer my question and help me out. After all, there's no risk in answering one teeny tiny little question, right? So let's get into it. It's going to help both of us in the end. So let's take a little stroll down memory lane. Do you remember 2019? I do, vaguely. Digital marketers were thriving. Our metrics were bright, shiny, and green, just like we like them. And then 2020 happened. We went remote. We hunkered down in our homes, afraid of what the forecast had to say about the looming state of the world to come. But wait, there's more! As if COVID wasn't already more than enough. And I'm not talking about the murder hornets. It was iOS 14. It was the cookie apocalypse. It was tech giants Google and Apple announcing the news to protect the privacy of the users and to limit the amount of information that's available to us, the advertisers, the marketers. Isn't it fun being a digital marketer? We get to have all those cool, conflicting feelings and emotions because as users, we're like, heck yeah, thanks Google. I actually would like some more privacy over my information. Thank you. And then as marketers. Ooh, that's scary. We have, a, we have a lot of questions. How am I going to do my job? How am I going to learn about my user? What new tools and tactics do I need to learn in order to sustain my career? We start to spiral. As technology has improved and we've adopted this data-driven mindset to make all of our marketing decisions, data-driven mindset. So what happens when our current methods of learning about our user are no longer available to us? You know, one option is just asking the user directly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we add some more fields to our form? That'll work. We'll get so much more information about the user. Let's try it. No one is filling out this long form. We are making the user work harder than they need to. And this isn't accessible. We have to get smarter. We have to think differently about solutions to our problems, and we have to start right now or our competition is going to leave us behind, leave us in the dust. We have to evolve. Making one teeny tiny little change on your contact page or whatever lead gen form you have can double your conversion rate. One tiny change can double your conversion rate. Shorten your form fields to three. All you need is three form fields on your contact page. So let's get into it. Let's talk about how we're going to be using marketing data to de-anonymize your website traffic. We're going to provide one-on-one -on -one personalized user experiences. And we're going to shorten your form fields, not lengthen them, without missing out on the valuable information that you need. And finally, we're going to be filling your funnel with sales qualified leads or SQLs. So there are three major takeaways, three big realizations that you need to make and for all of this to work. The first one is no one is filling out this long form. Users don't want to manually fill out forms anymore. The second realization is that most people actually want a personalized user experience. They want a personalized user experience, even if they don't realize it yet. In fact, over 70% of your users will actually get annoyed if their experience is not personalized, 
And the third is that you need to start using a database to support your sales and marketing initiatives. No more guessing. So let's start from the bottom. Databases. You probably have a CRM. Some people like HubSpot. Some people like Salesforce. Um, you need to have one. It doesn't really matter which one, as long as it works with your budget. There's pros and cons to all of them. Um, you want to see what works best for your company. At the end of the day, you just need to start somewhere. And your CRM, it's a database in itself. It's a database of hand raisers, people who have already willingly given you their information in some capacity. So what about the people who are on your website right now? The people who haven't raised their hand yet, you don't know who they are. We call those unknown visitors. This is where you scream, it's scary. Your CRM can't help you there. So you need an external database to fill in the blanks. So if you like what you're about to see here today and you want to start doing your own research and uh, looking up some of these tools that we talk about, the first one that you need to look at is a data activation platform. Write that down. So a data activation platform, it's going to help you lever leverage user data that's collected um, by publicly available company information. Um, no cookies needed. This is just available. Anybody can go find that. And you can use that database by itself to reveal your name, company, phone number, email, industry, social media, logo, tech stack. Think of what you could do with all of that, right? That's a lot of information. And your competitors are already using these databases, by the way. Oh, and um, we all know who your competitors are because we're all in each other's databases too. So. On top of all of that, you could use your database by itself, that external database with all of that IP information. Or you can integrate that database with your Google Analytics, your CRM, to enrich that contact information that you already have. So let's say you only had an email address before. Now you have way more information about that user. You have their full name. You have their job role, their seniority level. So here's a crash course on how that all works. We have data sourcing is the first step. And that's the process of collecting, sorting, and verifying different data points, millions of data points across hundreds of data sources, public and private. Um, these, are data, these are data points from hand raisers, like we talked about, people who have willingly given this information. So nothing behind the scenes, nothing sneaky, no cookies that we have to consent to. This is willingly given information. And then the second step of that is the data enrichment. So what happens once you already have that data? Well, it goes into your CRM. It goes into your analytics tools. Um, it can also be used in your audience segments in your personalization tools as well. So that leads us to our second realization that most people actually want a personalized user experience. And do you think that given all of the information that we now have about our user, we could create some pretty decently personalized content. Yeah, I'll answer that for you. The answer is yes, you can and you should be. In a B2B market, if you know the user's exact role, industry, company size, you probably have a pretty good idea of how your company can uniquely help solve their problems. And you know, all of those pain points, you could create 25 different landing pages. As SEOs, we love to do this. We love to create content. You could create 25 different landing pages that address all of their pain points, their industry, their keywords, everything that we know that user needs to see. But what if we just created one landing page instead? One landing page to rule them all. One landing page that whoever lands on this page, that content's going to resonate with that exact person. This is our contact page at DesignZilla's. So usually you don't see all the little arrows in the outline. So imagine that those aren't there. But take a look at the headline. Piper Aircraft. We're pulling in the company name. This is the user coming to our contact page and seeing their company info front and center. It's a little creepy, right? So look at the headline. We're pulling in the company name. Look at the top of the form. We're pulling in the logo. You could also look at the form itself, the form fields, or lack thereof. There's only three of them. You could look up at the top of the page. There's the navigation. It's gone. When the user gets to this page, there is one action for them to take. 
it is devastatingly clear what the user is supposed to do when they get to this page. So we've talked a lot about uh, page intent and purpose today. There's one purpose for this page, and it's to convert. And it doesn't just have to be a page. We can put it in a pop-up. So this is an example of what another agency did to target us. If you look up at the headline, they're pulling in our company name. You look at the logos, they put our logo and their logo together. They are forcing us to envision what it might be like to work together. Look at the offer. They know what goals we want to hit. They know what our goal is as a company. And it's cute. It's eye-catching. It makes the user stop for a moment and say, wait a minute, I see myself in this page. It's the same thing that we do when we're trying to build rapport with another person. When you're in person with someone, you mirror them. And that person is attracted. We're naturally drawn to ourselves. We all do it. And it's okay. It's normal. So that's what we're doing online. We're reflecting the user and letting them see themselves and take the action. And this is what we call inspiring a user to take the action. And if you want to go all out, you can. You can put your entire homepage in a personalized user experience for your target audience. So take a look at this example from Optimizely. They're targeting Adidas. And this is a page that they've optimized as part of their account-based marketing strategy. So look at the headline. Not only are they pulling in Adidas's company name, but they're also pulling in a specific pain point that they know is going to resonate with the user. So let's optimize digital experiences for your athletes. They know that company's target audience, athletes. And look at the background. They have that hero image of a woman running. You can probably bet that Optimizely's homepage doesn't always have a picture of somebody running. Like, that doesn't really make any sense. But if you're at Adidas and you work for Adidas and you come to this Optimizely page, their technology can sense that and display a personalized user experience with the content that you need to see and feel and experience in order to feel like you've been drawn to take that action. And this is what they do at Optimizely. This is what they're known for. I think they have a pretty good idea of how to execute personalization the right way. And for B2B, this stuff works. And you may be feeling like, oh, this is a little aggressive. And it is. But it works. In fact, for our company, when we did this to our contact page, it skyrocketed our B2B conversions by 20%. And if you have the right traffic strategy, even an increase of 1% in your conversions, your sales qualified leads, that's going to be an impact that's felt across your entire company. So we took it from a 20% increase for our sales qualified leads. That's for an entire year of more business. So... Now that you've just displayed to the user that you know so much about them that you can show them exactly what they need to feel, what they need to see, are you going to make them fill out this giant form to get started? No. No one is filling out this large, long form. One more time for the people in the back. Say it with me. No one is filling out this long form. Bye. We need to get smarter. Your user doesn't want to manually fill out that form anymore. You just need one form field, work email. With a work email, with that one form field, you can now use your enriched CRM to leverage over 100 different data attributes about your user. Full name, job role, company size, revenue. It's as simple as that. So do yourself a favor. Don't ask the user anything about themselves that can't be automatically pulled. Instead, now you can use these three form fields to get a deeper understanding of your user and what they need from you before you ever talk to them, before you set up your discovery call. So give your user the freedom to tell you what they need from you. What's your primary business challenge? How can we help you? This gets you the SQLs, the sales qualified leads. Because at the end of the day, your sales team doesn't just want more leads. They say they want more leads, but what they really want is better leads. They want to know that the leads that you put on their desks are going to be easy to close. So you may not know exactly how to do this yet, and that's okay. This is meant to be kind of 
dip your toes in the water, get used to it, and learn a new thing that you may not have known existed before. Um, but if you are ready to start doing this and you want to start small, you want to start looking up some different tools that you can use to get started with this, you're going to need three tools and three tools only to skyrocket your own B2B conversions. You need a CRM. We've talked about a couple of them already. There's HubSpot, Salesforce, Klaviyo. Depending on your industry or your needs, you're going to find a tool that's going to fit you better. The second tool that you're going to need is a data activation platform. There's Clearbit, Hoover's, Swordfish. They'll all have varying levels of accuracy in the data. So do your research, find out the one that's going to integrate. Um, and then you're going to need a personalization tool. So we've seen Optimizely. There's also Google Optimize, Sixth Sense. There's a ton of these tools out there that you can use to personalize every page of your site if you wanted. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to start small. And we're going to pick three tools that integrate really well with each other. And that's the key, finding three tools that are within your budget that work for your needs um, and that are going to work well together, that gel. So this is also not sponsored. So don't get me in trouble. So now that we have our three tools, we have our CRM, our data activation platform, and our personalization tool. Did everybody write that down? Yes? Head shakings? OK, good. So your CRM, your data activation platform, and your personalization tool. So when you're submitting that purchase request form with your office manager for your three new tools, your CRM, your data activation platform, and your personalization tool, do most of us a favor, and don't forget your Oxford comma. Thank you.